quit. I had Brother Joe preach for me last week, now I've got Brother David, so I've been kind of taking it easy. They're watching out for my health, okay? Uh, by the way, we do have a bottle of water up here for you in case you need it. Um, I want to say just a word or two about Brother David, first of all. Uh, I've known him now for a pretty good while. And I'd have to say, first of all, I consider him a friend. Amen. And uh, not only that, though, he's been a mentor for me. He has helped me and immensely. And he's always been there. He's a good, how would you say, a cheerleader. He, he won't let you get too far down. Amen. But uh, some time ago, I was on the committee that we had to find a new director of missions for Tennessee Valley Baptist Association. And I'm glad to say that we chose Brother David as our director of mission. And uh, I have never regretted one moment of that decision that we made. You know, uh, and I've heard uh, Brother David say this, pastors don't have pastors. You know what? We don't have any more. But I do, I consider Brother David my pastor. And this morning, I, I'm going to let him preach today. It's, it's been a while. And I'm, I'm not, actually, I think I've only heard you preach one time. That's what so, Rhonda said. <laughs> so, you know what? I'm not sure, you know, that anyway. So we're going to, I'm looking forward to this. And uh, you out there be praying for him as I will be praying, and uh, you make him welcome. And Brother David, you come and you preach, and you give us some uh, whatever you want to about the association, and you also let you close the service however you'd like to pray. Thank you, Brother. Appreciate okay. it. You just come if you would. Thank you. God bless you. Well, Brother Paul is a very good friend. He was the chairman of the committee that called me, and so... I'm not sure how popular he is right now, but uh, I really appreciate that. That was a really tough decision. And uh, last January, uh, or the end of December, I made the decision after pastoring at Lake Drive, a very wonderful church where Betty's son and daughter-in-law do our music and uh, love them very much, but made a very difficult decision to retire from pastoring and, and devote myself full time to director of missions. I would have done this along with pastoring and uh, been, been a very difficult thing for me to do, to, let, to leave something I loved. It wasn't, I wasn't leaving something I didn't love. But I felt that God was leading for me to fully devote myself to this ministry and God is blessing our association. And uh, Brother Paul's always been one of the most faithful pastors. And if everybody was like Brother Paul, we wouldn't have any problems in our association. And we appreciate him and Dora, and but really do consider them good friends. And just want to let you know that just a few things that we're doing. I don't know if you saw the front page of the Herald this morning, but uh, I've been told I'm on the front page. Uh, I've hit it big. I'm on the front page of the Herald. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> We, uh, we met with uh, the county executive and the, the emergency directors and, and other people. And, but we have a feeding team ministry. And what that feeding team ministry is do, does, and it's a, made up of volunteers. If any of you'd like to serve on that, we'd love for you to do that. But in times of emergency, we go out with our feeding trailer. We have teams. And uh, we feed the emergency workers. Sometimes they get forgotten. And uh, sometimes if there's a tragedy or someone has died or drowned or burned up or whatever it may be, the situation, tornadoes, we go where there, and it may be, we go out there for a few hours or we, we may be out there weeks in the case of if a tornado hits and they're out cutting trees down or whatever. But we feed those workers and we pray with them. And sometimes uh, there may be people that, that just need someone to pray with them, and we'll meet up there with them for that situation. We also have a feeding or a wheelchair wrap team. We have five teams right now. If you're interested in working in that, we, we just last week, one of our teams built a, a trailer, a, a ramp for someone uh, that's handicapped, can't get out of their house. They're prisoners in their own home. 
and uh, we we milk them around absolutely no charge we have a, a, a source out of nashville that pays for wheelchair ramps for people who qualify and most people that are handicapped do qualify and we we built them a ramp and uh, we built last year about 20 of those and uh, uh, that we we have some that just go out and do it on their own without our funding and so we we don't sometimes don't really even keep up with that one but but we built at least 20 last year so wonderful ministry we have new mission trips this last March, we, I took a team from our association to Romania. And uh, from, a, from a boy from Grundy County, I never thought I'd ever go to Romania, but I've been over there about 12 times. And uh, if you'd ever like to be a part of something like that, we'd probably do one next year. And, but anyway, our, I just believe you take this church here, then you take the church down the road. This church can do so much, and the church down the road can do so much. But if we combine our resources and we combine our efforts, I think we can do more together than we can separately. Don't you believe that? Yes. And so we just praise the Lord. We appreciate this church. It's always been a faithful supporter of our association. And I hope that continues on for many, many years. I love your pastor. I love this church. And I just appreciate you wanting to spend a few minutes just telling you what we're doing and thanking you for what, how you supported that. If you will, turn your Bibles to Mark chapter 9. We'll start reading verse 14. He called me a Philadelphia lawyer. You have to dress sharp to outdress Paul. Uh, he, he's a sharp dresser. If you will, let's all stand in, in honoring God's word. Bills, I have a pre I've been on but I went on a cruise, Ron and I. By the way, this is my wife Rhonda. Most of many of you know her already. Uh, other than Jesus, she's the best decision I ever made. And uh, I appreciate her support. We've been on a cruise to Alaska, so it's been a while since I preached. And I'm uh, gonna have surgery soon and it's gonna be a few weeks before I can have so I'm I, I can preach again, so for a while, and so I'm enjoying the fact that I get to preach today. I thank you, Paul, for letting me do that. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, what question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit, and whosoever had, he taketh him, he teareth him, he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him straightway, the spirit tear him, and he fell to the ground, and wallowing, foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since that this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. And oft times he, it, he hath cast him into the fire, and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us, and help us. And Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. And when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and dead spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him and he saw he was dead insomuch that many said he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. Let's pray. 
Father, thank you for the music we've heard this morning, and thank you for the wonderful opportunity to preach this morning. I pray today you just fill me with your spirit. Lord, if there's a sin in my life, I pray that you just forgive me. And Lord, use me today for your glory. Speak through your word. We need to hear from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, in these verses here, we see some of the most contradictory words that you'll find in the Bible. Jesus asked him a question, do you believe? And he said, yes. Help my unbelief. Now, those, those two don't go together, do they? Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt that way? I think if we're honest, we can identify with this father. He had a son. <coughs> and uh, he had an evil spirit in him. And it, it made him have convulsions and... and uh, he would foam at the mouth. And I'm sure as any parent would know, to see your child suffering such a way would just be heartbreaking. Amen. He was help and he was helpless to do anything about it. I, I know what that's about. Ron and I had a child with cancer, and uh, you know, you get that diagnosis and and you know, you take them to the doctors and you just you give them your child. And, and it's just a helpless thing. And uh, there's not enough money you can throw at it or anything like that to fix the situation. You feel totally helpless. And, uh, and so I, I, I would realize how, in a way, how this father must have felt. Uh, he had faith. But he didn't, he didn't know if it was enough faith. Have you ever felt that way? He had faith, but he didn't know if he had enough faith. For most of us, faith, faith is in flux. It's never a constant thing. Amen. Sometimes our faith is strong, and sometimes we feel our faith is weak, and sometimes that can happen in all in one day. Sometimes we feel like our faith is strong, and sometimes we don't know if we have enough faith. Uh Today I want to look at three principles of faith I think that can help us. And we see it right here in these scriptures. Three principles of faith. And the first principle is the importance of faith. Faith is important, isn't it? Yes, it is. The father asked Jesus if he could heal his son. He asked, his, he asked Jesus, can you heal my son? Now, let's give this man a break. You can see why his faith may be a little weak because this man had gone to the disciples. Now, in the preceding verses, we didn't read those, but Jesus went up to the Mount of Transfiguration. He took Peter, James, and John, and, and they had a wonderful thing happen to us up there. And they go from the high of that wonderful experience down there to seeing that the disciples were unable to heal uh, his son. Now, you said, well, they, well he's not, they're not Jesus. But Jesus, if you know the scripture, Jesus has given his disciples the ability to cast out demons. Amen. He had given them the ability to heal. And yet they were unable to do it even though Jesus had given them that ability. And he told them the reason they couldn't do it, this thing comes by faith and fasting, or by prayer and fasting. And, and so it, he was... You could tell Jesus was frustrated with him. He said, how long am I going to be with you here? I'm going to, one day I'm going to die and I'm going to go back. I'm going to leave you here. How long is it going to be before you learn how to be successful in what I've called you to do? Jesus had given this a power. And so you can see why this, this man was a little hesitant to believe because he had already been let down by his disciples. But I want you to notice the response of Jesus. This man asked Jesus, can you heal my son? And then Jesus returns that with a question. Jesus often did that. When people ask him a question, he would return that question with a question. The man asked Jesus, can you heal my son? And this man, and Jesus answered him, can you believe? Can you believe? The Bible tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen. He didn't say without faith it's difficult or it's hard to please God. No, he said without faith it is impossible to please God. 
Faith is essential to being a Christian. And, and uh, everything about being a Christian is based on faith. Well, first of all, we can't get saved without faith, right? The Bible tells us that we're saved by grace through faith. Ephesians 2, verses 8 through 10. He says, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourself is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We're saved by grace through what? Faith. faith. We can't be saved without faith. In John 3, 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever, what? Believes. And that's another word for faith. Believe. That made that word put that faith into action to entrust your life. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We can't be saved without faith. And the Bible tells us that we're justified by faith. That word justified means to be declared righteous. You see, before we're saved, God is a holy God and we are sinful and we're separated from God by our sin. We are his enemies. The Bible in Romans chapter 5 verse 10 says that we were his enemies. And but because Jesus died on the cross, so of course, if we trust in him, we can have peace with God because we've been justified. That means that the thing we're no longer his enemies, but we've been declared righteous. It is a judicial thing that happens where God sees us through the blood of Jesus. And he doesn't see us as sinners anymore, but he sees us as his sons. We are declared righteous. Amen. And it's through faith that, that happens. We're justified by faith. And not only in our salvation is it essential to have faith, but just to walk the successful Christian life, we must live by faith. In 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Listen, to be a successful Christian, you got to walk by faith, not by sight. Right. To be a successful church, you got to walk by faith, mm -hmm. not by sight. To be a successful association, we got to walk by faith and not by sight. You know, everybody can walk by sight. But to when God's leading, when, when you can't see, and, uh, you know, I had to make a big decision this last year. God was moving me to, to take on this position full time and walk away from a wonderful church and walk away from a place I've been 20 years. And, and, and it was, you know, well, how can you do that, brother? I had to take a step of faith that God was, was going to take care of the situation and God was going to be with me. And, and, and for us to live with a successful Christian life, we must walk by faith. We must have faith for answered prayers. You know, sometimes I think we pray and we don't even expect God to do anything. That's right. We just pray because, well, we're we supposed to pray and, you know, and sometimes we meet and we have prayer requests and we don't expect God to do anything. Listen, I think when we pray, we ought to pray with faith, expecting God to move. Because mm -hmm. that's what God does. He wants to move. Now, he may not move the way we want him to move every time. Because he's, he's an omniscient God. He knows everything. He's smarter than we are. You know, I, I've got a five-year-old grandson, and we don't do everything he asks. Because we love him too much to do that. And, and we, but we will respond to him. And, and, and so when we pray... We need to pray in faith and expecting God to do something. I heard about this woman who had been a big drought. And she'd been praying for rain. And, uh, and, and there was no forecast for rain. And they saw her one day. She was carrying her umbrella. They said, why are you carrying your umbrella? It's not supposed to rain today. And she says, I'm praying for rain. And I'm expecting God to bring rain. Right. You know, sometimes we pray and we don't expect God to do anything. And so when we pray, we ought to go to God. You know, what a privilege it is to pray, isn't it? Yeah. That we can go and be ushered into the very throne room of God, and we know he hears our prayer if we are believers. And we pray, and we, we, God wants to hear our prayers. He wants to answer our prayers. And so when we go to him, we ought to go expecting God to do something. Amen. You know, uh, my little girl's not so little anymore. She's grown up, but... Uh, when she was a little girl, I'd be sitting in the recliner or something, sitting in a chair, 
and she'd come crawl up my lap, put her arm around my neck, and she'd give me a kiss on the cheek, and I'd just start pulling my wallet out before she even asked. <laughs> you know, I, I knew that she was up to something, you know. Uh, she was expecting something when she came and asked me because I was her father. And the fact is, is when we go to the Lord and ask him for prayer, or asking in prayer for things, God loves us more than I love my daughter. And when we go to him, he's wanting to, he's wanting to meet our need. The Bible said he, he will meet our need according to his riches and glory. And so the fact is, when we pray, we ought to pray in faith. And then it takes faith to follow God's leading. Uh, when God is leading, and sometimes it's a scary proposition. Uh, you know, I look at my life, and and uh, I'm getting old, Brother Paul, but I, I've still got my memory, and I can still remember things that where God has called me and to step out of where I'm comfortable, step mm -hmm. out of where I'm at ease. I remember the Lord didn't really call me to preach until I was 40 years old. I've been in ministry my whole adult life, really most of my life. Grew up with a singing family. We traveled in a quartet. And when Ron and I got married, I became a minister of music. And, and I was directing a large choir and, and comfortable there. I raised my kids there. And yet God began to call me and pull me and to preach. And we left all of our comfort in Georgia, moved to Ray County, started pastoring the church at the time, had 15 people in it. And, and uh, I, I, I moved an hour just to pastor that church. And I left the large church with 60 in our choir. And I had people thinking I had lost my mind or I was going through some kind of midlife crisis or something. And, and you know, my pastor looked at me and says, is there any potential in that church? And I said, Brother Paul, you wouldn't believe it. There's people, lost people everywhere around there. And, and you know, God blessed that, and we grew, and God moved me out there, and, and got settled there, and then he began to move me away, and he moved me over to Lake Drive, and I was there 20 years, and then in the last few years, God is moving me again. And every time he moves me, it's a scary thing, and it takes faith to step out Amen. when God's leading. It doesn't just affect me. It affects my family, my wife. It affects my church. It affects a lot of people. And, and to step out. And, and in your life, there may be times where God is leading you to step out wherever it may be. And it's a scary thing. But I'll tell you, it's a lot safer following the Lord in a, in a scary place than it is amen. to stay right there where God's telling you to yes, live from. Amen. Then there's faith to endure trials and testing. You know, it's one thing to have faith that you ask for something and you have faith that God's going to re re give you what you ask for or, or give you something. That's one kind of faith. But there's another kind of faith when you're going through a deep, dark trial and you don't understand why God's allowing you to go through that. Mm -hmm. Times of hurt, mm -hmm. times of suffering, times of sickness, times of, of loss. You say, God, why are you allowing me to go through those things? And, and that's when your, your faith is tested the most. And to trust God when you don't understand him. You know, you read the book of Job. Job had that kind of faith, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He didn't understand anything he was going through. But in, in spite of everything he was going through, he had faith. He trusted God. He said, though he slays me, yet will I trust him. That's faith in the book Paul. Right. And so... There's that faith. In order, it's important that we live by faith. We can't be saved without faith, and we cannot live a successful Christian life without faith. But not only the importance of faith, let's look at the object of faith. The object of faith is more important than the amount of faith. It's important what your, your faith is in. It's more important than the amount of faith. This man had weak faith. But it was in Jesus. And a little bit of faith in Jesus is, is much more beneficial than a lot of faith in some, something else. Jesus was able to, is able to do anything he chooses to do. You realize that there is nothing that God can't do. There is nothing that God can't do. The only limitations on God are the ones he places on himself. He cannot sin. He cannot lie. That, and those are the, the limitations that God has placed on himself. But the fact God can do anything he chooses to do. And this man had a little bit of faith, but he had it in the right person. 
many put their faith in the wrong person or things. You know, when I was growing up, uh, I was in sports and I was a very self-confident person. I had a lot of confidence in myself. And you know, it, it wasn't, it, God had to really put me through the ringer a few times and, uh, to, to teach me that if I want to do anything for God, I can't trust in myself. I must put my faith in God. <laughs> and sometimes we put our faith in ourselves. I can do this. I can do this. You know, sometimes we say, you know, God won't put any more on us than we can bear. You know, the Bible really doesn't say that. Matter of fact, in, in 2 Corinthians, the first chapter, it tells Paul talks about a time when he went through a trial that it was took so much that he couldn't bear it. The weight was so strong. Matter of fact, he said he even despaired for his own life. He wanted to die. He said, but then he believed and trusted in God, and God gave him the strength to go through what he was going to go through. Mm -hmm. The fact is, we can't, it's not like God's saying, now, how much can he handle? And he puts that on us. No, you know what he does? He says, I'm going I'm to put more on them than they can handle sometimes, but I'm going to give them the strength to do what they can't do on their own. And then some people put their faith in religion. I go to Romania, and uh, that's a very religious place. There's Orthodox churches all over the place. The government builds those churches for the people. It's a government church. And when those babies are born, they, they baptize them, and they say, you're a Christian. And those people grow up religious. <laughs> and they, 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 they think that they're right with God because the priest told them they were right. And they don't, never have trusted Christ as their Savior. They never believed in him. They don't even know about that. And yet, uh, when you witness to them, they say, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. You know what? You're trusting in a religion. Mm -hmm. Religion will take you to hell. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes we put our trust in people. This man put his trust in those disciples, and those disciples let him down. Let me tell you, I, I, I have a high opinion of your pastor, but I want you to know if you put your trust in him, at some point he'll let you down. Amen. If you put your trust in me, at some point I'll let you down. If you put your trust in this church, at some point this church will put you down, let you down. You can put your trust in, in the Baptists, at some point they will let you down. But let me tell you, if you put your trust in Jesus, he will never, ever, ever let you down. Amen. Jesus says if we have the faith the size of a mustard seed, we can move mountains. You see, it's the amount of faith is not as important as the object of faith. Mm -hmm. Just, you said, Brother David, my faith is weak. Well, then use that faith and put it in Jesus. Some say, I, I, I don't know if I can get saved. I don't have, I don't have, I don't know if I have enough faith. Listen, the Bible says that that uh, we're saved by grace through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is a gift of God. The faith that you have mm -hmm. is the faith that God gave you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Just put your faith in Jesus. Or if you're going through a hard time, you're going through something you don't understand. You say, Brother David, I just don't think I can handle this. I don't think I can do it. You can't. But God can through you. God can through you. Gee, Paul talked about that it's through, it's through our weaknesses that his strength is shown. It's, it, that we, it's through, uh, through him. And so that little bit of faith that we have, if we put it in Christ, God can do the great thing. Which leads to the last principle of faith. Not only the importance of faith and the object of faith, but the exercise of that faith. While this father's faith was weak, he exercised a little bit of faith that he had. The Bible says in Romans 12, 3, that God has given to every person a measure of faith. Do you know what it said there? God has given to every person a measure of faith. Hmm. And, and see, so it's our responsibility to exercise the faith that he gave us. It's his gift to us. We have to exercise that faith to be saved and we have to exercise that faith to, as we're going through different things and we ask him for things we need or we're going through trouble, we have to exercise the faith we have. It's, it's like a baby. Uh, 
We had a couple from the church where I just left and still a member of. They just had twins, twin girls. You need to pray for those that couple. <laughs> twin girls. And I saw a picture of them and they're all bundled up and you know that just did my heart so good because I've been his pastor since he's a little boy. And uh, I even pastored him at my first church. But now to see him with these two little girls and now these little babies, God gave them all the muscles they'll ever have when they were born. Do you realize that? When a baby's born, they, they, they have every muscle they'll ever have. And when they're born, they can't raise their head up. They can't roll over. They certainly can't walk. But as time goes along and they receive nourishment and they begin to move and all of a sudden those muscles begin to exercise and they get a little bit stronger and first thing you know, they're raising their head. They're rolling over. First thing you know, they're jumping in their crib. Then they're crawling out of their crib. You know, they're crawling on the floor and then they're walking on the floor. And as they grow and mature, they become strong. And you know how what determines how strong they get? Is how much they exercise their muscles. You know, you see some people all muscled up. That's somebody, they weren't born that way. They were exercising those muscles. And God has given to every one of us a measure of faith. And why is it some people have strong faith and other people have weak, weak faith? You have to exercise the muscles or the faith that you have. We have to exercise that muscle or that faith in order to get saved. When God calls us, speaks to our heart and, and convicts us and we know our need of save, be saved, and, 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 and what determines if someone gets saved or not? If they exercise that faith in Christ, they can become a believer. If they don't, they don't. They have to exercise. And then as believers, as we live, to live a successful Christian life, God will put us in situations to force us to, to use that faith. We, and he's, he's pressuring us to, to, in order not to hurt us, but that we might exercise that faith in our life. And the more that we exercise our faith, the stronger our faith will become. You look at the life of Abraham in the Old Testament. If you look at the series of things where he's put into things, and sometimes he fails and sometimes he succeeds, but every time his faith gets a little stronger to the point one day he asked him to take his son and, and offer his son up as a sacrifice. And Abraham doesn't even question God. And God had already told Abraham, he waited until he was 100 years old to give him that son. And he told him he was going to have a great nation from, me, from this son. And now he's telling him to go sacrifice him. And, and, and Abraham doesn't know what he's doing, but God, Abraham just trusted God, and God had a plan. And so the same thing with us. God will put us in situations that will cause us to exercise that faith in our life. So you see, there's some things that we can only be taught when we're going through trials. In the Old Testament, there were three Hebrew children. They had been deported from uh, Judah, and, and now there are princes there in, in, uh, in Babylon, and, and, and they had been given a high position, but the king built this big beast and says that when the horn blows, they were to fall down and worship him. And they, these three Hebrew children said, we're not going to do that. And the king brought them forth and said, now we're going to give you a second chance. And they said, well, you can give us a second chance. But we're, going, we're not going to worship your, your, your idols. We're going to worship God. And he said, we're going to throw you in the fire. And he said, well, we think that God can, is going to deliver us, but whether he does or not, let, let, you be, let this be known, king. We will not bow and worship your idol. Mm -hmm. You see, their faith was being tested, and they exercised that faith. And if you look in the earlier text, they've been, already been extra. They wouldn't eat the diet. All different things where their faith was being tested. And every time our faith is Texas, tested, and every time we exercise that faith, our faith gets a little stronger. You want to have strong faith? Exercise it. Exercise it. The more you exercise your faith, the stronger it will get. Amen. And we know the story. King looked down there, threw him in the fire. It was so hot that the people threw him in the fire, burned up and died. And he looked down there, he threw three in, and he saw four. Who do you think that fourth one was? 
Jesus. I think it was Jesus, don't you? Yes. And the only thing that was burnt was the, the ropes that were, were, were tying them up. They were they went in there bound, and God just used that fire to unbind them. And when they got out, they didn't even smell like smoke. You see, they exercised their faith. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes God will keep us from the fire, but sometimes he'll just get in that fire with us. Right. Now, they weren't, they, did, they weren't harmed, but there have been times when people... Or that died for the Lord and, and, and something God doesn't rescue us every time but the fact is he's with us he has a will and plan of our life and, and it takes a special faith to endure the fire of trouble listen I don't know what's going on in your life right now but I do know people because <laughs> I am one and I know that we are either just got out of a trial right now, or we just got out of one, or we're in one right now, if, and if neither one of those are true, just look out for the third one. We're going to go into one. That's what life is about, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Job said a man is full of woman a few days and full of trouble. What does it take to, to, to live a successful Christian life? But our faith in Christ. Exercise that faith. And, and when he will be with us, he will take us through those times, you see, the question is not, do you have enough faith in Jesus? Because it's not the amount. The faith, the question is, is your faith pointed toward Christ? And are you exercising that faith? You see, you have an option when you go through a difficult time. I've seen people go, two different people go through something similar. One quits. And the other flourishes. What's the difference? What's the difference between those two people? Faith. Now they both had faith. But one exercised it. And the other didn't. So you got, you, every time, you, sometimes you can help what happens to you. Sometimes a lot of stuff we go through is our own fault. It's a consequence of our own bad decisions or whatever. But sometimes we, we can't help what happens to us. But we can help how we respond. That's the choice we have. Mm -hmm. We can choose to respond and complaining <coughs> and quitting, or we can choose to say, I'm going to trust God. Amen. I'm going to trust Him. I don't understand why He would allow this to happen. I don't understand this situation. I don't know, I don't understand. But what I'm going to do, even though I can't see, I'm you know, if we can see it, we don't need faith, right? Even though I can't understand it, I can't see it. I'm going to trust in God. I'm going to believe in it. And if he's leading you to do something, you say, Brother David, I just don't know if I can, I can do this. Listen, it takes courage. To, it takes faith to step out. So we have that choice. Are we going to trust in God or not? I want to ask Miss Betty if she'll come and, and uh, our lady who leads the singing and I'd like for you to stand this morning before we can go into the invitation. But Paul, you want me to just do the invitation? Yes, please. All right. I don't know where you are in your life right now. But I wonder if there's anyone here today that you need to exercise your faith. And your faith has been challenged. Uh, you know, sometimes... It's in a broken relationship. Sometimes it's your children. Uh, sometimes it's a work situation. I just found out yesterday my nephew had a great, had a great job. So I just eliminated that job. He's 60 years old about to lose his job. That's a scary thing to, to, to uh, lose your job. Sometimes it's a job situation. Sometimes it's a health issue. And you just you don't understand why you're going through this or, or it's just a scary thing to go through maybe that's not your fault of asking why but it's, it is a scary thing to go through maybe it's a financial issue I don't know what the issue is but God does and this morning before we have an invitation would you just bow your head and no one looking around I'm going to pray in a few minutes and 
Maybe there's someone here this morning that said, Brother David, uh, God spoke in my heart, and I want to I put my faith in Christ. I want to exercise that. It's weak. Maybe it's weak, but I, that is that weak faith that I have. I want to I wanna exercise it. Is there anyone this morning that said, Brother David, would you pray for me? Anyone while I pray? Father, we thank you this day for all that you do for us. Lord, we, many times we fail you, but you have never, ever failed us. And, and I pray today that you would just speak to our hearts. If anyone here today that's going through a difficult time, I pray, Lord, that you just encourage them and strengthen them, we ask. And Lord, I pray, God, that we'd exercise the faith that you've given us. Lord, there are some here may be going through some hard times or difficult. Some may be having difficult decisions. Whatever the situation may be, Lord, I pray, God, that they would put their trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Page 54.